Amen. Well, I want to just jump right into it. Uh, if you've been around or been watching online, you know we've been preaching about the kingdom. It's a series called Disoriented, how uh, one day I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and says, my people are disoriented. Uh, you know, they're, they're, their focus is not on the kingdom. It's it's on the world. It's, it's, it's on, you know, the Bible says that things that are uh, that, that are spiritual, that are unseen or more real than the things that are seen. And, you know, sometimes we forget about that. And see, that's the reason why uh, our worry should not be so worryful because guess what? What I don't see is actually more real. So, so when I don't see that money in my bank account, oh, I thought you wanted to give it to offering. I'm like, bring back the... When I don't see that money, you know, I'm, I'm praying anyway and because I, I have faith that God knows what he's doing. Guess what? When the doctor gives us a bad report and guess what? I don't see that healing. I don't feel my healing, but I remind myself that guess what? What's more real is what I don't see. And I believe that healing is inside of me even though it hasn't manifested yet. So we've been preaching about that. Last week I preached on kingdom authority, about you have the authority and what God, first you got to know what authority means. First you got to honor authority before you can actually use that authority. And, and this morning uh, I want to preach on kingdom power. Come on, somebody say kingdom power. Uh, I, was, I, w- I was looking at some notes uh, this morning from, from uh, a thing that I had. And, and I, I want to know, this is, we have had a, a focus at the beginning of the year about reading your word. The problem is, is one day I, I, I was reading my Bible and the Lord spoke to me, says, if you're not a lover of the word, you don't a lot of love of me because he is his word. That's how we know him. Amen. So that should be such a priority in our lives. And uh, we've been putting an effort. Uh, if you're back there, we, we, we printed out some more about reading your Bible through in a year. Uh, you know, and, and they give you two or three chapters. And uh, for me personally, it's not enough. And, you know, I, I got to keep doing it and, you know, and keep more until I'm fed. But I, I thought about, I read this with some paperwork that I had. It said, uh, th- there's a question I want you to think about this week. Uh, does your families truly have access to the scripture? Does your family truly have access to the scripture? And I, I want you to think about this, I, you know, uh, and access doesn't mean just having a copy of a Bible in your home. And access means, am I living it in front of them? Do we really have access to the scripture? So I want you to think about that as we're going into the next few weeks about uh, uh, putting a focus on reading your word. Amen. Think about it. Does your Bible have access? Do they have access? Uh, and then this is the question. This week, I want to ask you how you can make your Bibles more accessible to your families, to your students, to your coworkers. Amen. And we want to see God do something. Amen. And God's going to move his word. Uh, the, we just sung a song says, you're a man of your word. Amen. And that's twofold. What he says, we believe it, but also what his word is, what that Bible is, that's what he's a man of. Amen. We've been talking about kingdom power. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I want to I want to just access that. And look, I don't have enough time to be able to break it down the way I want to. But. Uh, so go home and read these scriptures, study these things if, if it really piques your, your, your curiosity and in, in, in your understanding. Uh, I, want, I want to put up Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 1 through 3 back. Acts chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Put that up on the screen real quick. Hallelujah. This is what I was thinking. Of. We're talking about the kingdom. To whom also he showed himself af- alive after his passion uh, many, by many infallible proofs. Yeah, no, no, I didn't, let me go back, please. I mean, infallible proof, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of them things pertaining to the kingdom. That's what we've been preaching on the kingdom. Amen. Uh, next verse, please. No, that's good. That's good right there. You can stop there. I want you to put up Philippians 4, 9. That is where I want to uh, stay this morning. Philippians 4, 9. Uh, read it with me. Those things which ye have learned, both learned, received, and heard. And seen in me, do. Let's read that again. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. One more time. Can I read it one more time? Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Put up the title slide and you're going to see what a kingdom power. And I I titled it, Learn, Receive, Heard, and Seen. 
Now, I want to say this. This was Paul speaking uh, to the Philippians, to the church at Philippi. But who did Paul learn from? Who did Paul learn? Paul, Paul went to the desert of Arabia. Who dropped him down and said, hey, from the horse and said, hey, I got something for you to do for me. I've called you out. So I believe when Paul said, the things that I've showed you are not mine. Paul said this in Corinthians 1 and 11, which he's not going to put it up, but Corinthians 1 and 11 says, follow me as I follow Christ. So everything Paul was saying, what Paul was doing, uh, I believe was uh, a reflection of what Christ was doing. Amen. So Paul said the things I've, I, I learned, received, heard, and seen. So I begin to think if Christ taught Paul, then, then I wonder what the Lord, Jesus spoke about kingdom power. If everybody with me, everybody tracking with me. I know Paul was saying it, but it was through the unction and the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. So I started this. I thought about this, and I'm talking about kingdom power. Hallelujah. Learned. I want to go with learned real quick. Put up learned. He taught with power. We're talking about Paul and Jesus at the same time, but it was the Holy Spirit through Paul, which the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. He taught with power. The scripture behind that is Matthew 7 and 29. Look what it says. For he taught them as one having authority, not of the scribes. Keep it up for a second. Think about this. When I said, when we were talking about last, last, last Sunday about if you don't have power, you don't have authority. Guess what? Guess what? If that, if that cop don't have a gun and you're a faster runner than him, guess what? He has no power over you because guess what? You got to catch me first. Uh, guess what? Or, or not even a cop, but how about a, how about a grandson? <laughs> Elijah runs. He tries to outrun me, but he forgets he can run faster, but my legs are longer. So he always wants to ra race me. So what I do is, is, is I let him think he's winning. And I, I'm just right there, and I'll get up close to him, and then he's getting nervous, and he, he tries to go faster. And then that last at the end, I just put my eye as far as I can, and he loses every time. Because, because yeah, I let him lose. I'm teaching him about life. Poppy, Poppy knows best to do what Poppy says. Anyway, so he said, I thought having authority, not as a scribe. So think about this. What we've learned. You know, do we, do the, 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 the scribes were just saying what was on a word. But there was something more about what Christ said, about what Paul said. There was something deep down inside what was authority. Why? Because they had power with their words. This is not, I'm just not reading, for God so loved the world that he gave. When I read it, there's, there, there's some authority and a power. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If you resist the devil and he shall flee. Well, if you resist the devil, no. Resist him and he shall flee. He taught with authority. He knew what he was talking about. And I believe that God wants us to teach with authority. He wants us to teach the kingdom, but with power. You can't speak with nothing you don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's not necessarily true. If you go to Facebook, there's a lot of people talking about stuff they have no idea what they're talking about. I got the biggest amen of the night hey, and this morning, amen. But it's true. But if you want to be known, if I don't know quite what I'm talking about, I try to keep my mouth shut for the most part. Because I remember Abraham Lincoln said, it's better to be quiet and thought as a fool than if you open your mouth and remove all doubt. You ever met somebody? Stop, 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 stop talking, stop talking, just stop talking. <laughs> Kingdom power. I believe it's time for the church to begin to learn with power. He taught with power. We begin to learn the power of God. Come on, I'm, I, I hope this is not just a, a little quick sermon, but when you begin to read that word, I'm learning the power of God. I'm learning how to have faith. I'm learning how to pray for the sick. I'm learning how to prophesy. Come on, I'm learning. There's some power being given unto me. Amen. Praise the Lord. The next Paul said, what, what, you've, what you've learned, listen to this, what you received, he gave power. I'm trying to tell you, God has some power for us this morning. Uh, you you want to know why, why, what, what I, I believe people don't have nothing to do with the church because there ain't no power. Come on. Come on. How many is going to take your, mechanic, tell your, your car to a mechanic that, that ain't fixed nothing? Come on. That you, you, if you bring your car to a mechanic, 
and fixing it. The other day we were talking about a car and uh, they, they changed some spark plugs and the car packs and, and the mechanic said, just take it home because it's no more good. So a friend of mine scratched his head and he, he's a mechanic and he said, who goes from spark plugs and car pack to the engine shot? He says, that's not even logical. And I said, well, maybe he's not a mechanic. <laughs> but here we go into the church because they need something. And we too, we so focused on lights and, and loud music and, and who does what. I'm the singer. No, I'm the singer. No, I'm the preacher. And all they want is power. They want people that can help them. That's what the world is looking for. But he gave us power. Hallelujah. Matthew 7 and 29 says this. Matthew 7 and 20, the next one, Luke 10 and 19, I'm sorry. Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemies. Keep it right there. And nothing shall hurt you. Come on, I'm trying to get this down in your spirit. Guess what? He says, behold, I give. I'm not, not think about, give. This, this, this was 2,000 years ago. He said this, I give it to you. It's not, I'm going to give it to you. I already, you could easily say, I gave to you power already. You don't understand when you gave your life to the Lord and you were filled with the Holy Ghost, you got something down inside. He says, I give it to you. You don't have to earn it. See, we're still trying to earn power and trying to make us, well, if I pray more or if I fast more, Jesus said, I've already given it to you. The question is, is do you receive it? Because see, that's what it is. He gave it. He gave power. Paul said also this. He said, I heard. Paul says, well, what you've heard Put that slide up. What you heard, think about this. He spoke with power. He says, what you heard, he spoke with power. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4 and 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. They were astonished at his doctrine. My Lord, I'm amazed at his doctrine because his word was with power. Think about it. Think about this. What you heard, I think about as, as when we go back uh, and think about Lazarus. He was dead. His ears were not functioning. Oh, but when they rolled the stone away and when he says, Lazarus, come forth. Those ears that didn't function, those ears that were that, that were dead. But you know what? There was a power in his word. Guess what? He didn't need him to roll the stone to get the word through. It's because he wanted to let him out. It was a done deal. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And those words, the power of those words went into a dead man. That power in those words went all the way down to Abraham's bosom. And there was the spirit of Lazarus. And he says, whoa, what is that? I've heard something. No, you don't know what you mean. There's people talk. No, something called my name. There was some kind of power that just came in. And all of a sudden, he started raising. Where, where are you going? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody's calling my name, and I can't stop it. Then all of a sudden, that spirit went back into that body, and he rose to life, and he took a breath all because he heard the one that spoke with power. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise? Hallelujah. And that goes into the, to the fourth. Paul said, what you've seen, they demonstrated power. Learn, received, heard, and seen. There's too many miracles to show the demonstration of the power. I just talked about Lazarus. We just talked about last Sunday morning about walking on the water. That the molecules that were, they wasn't made to stick together and, and take weight, but because well, the, the Jesus said, come forth. Guess what? Guess what? Because there was some authority walking. I'm talking, we need to know who we are in Christ, and we need to start living in it. Amen. Guess what? I don't need to, to, to fall under the devil's uh, uh, deception because I am full of power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just say a few miracles just because I, I want to just stay here for a second. What have you seen God do in your life? What's the power of God that he's worked in your life? <clears throat> Leopards healed. 
Remember what we talked about? John the Baptist? He says, go tell them that the dead's healed. Go tell, go, go, the, the dead's been raised. The sick's been healed. People are getting delivered. Go tell him all these things. Go, go tell him what you've seen is actually what Jesus said. We've seen him demonstrated. So guess what? Paul and Jesus, you know, they, they kind of on the same wavelength as this. The devil says, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. So guess what? Because Paul was walking in the authority and power that he had learned from Jesus. So I like the way that it says, hey, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but the devil said, who are you? What I, my question is this morning is that if when I have that situation happen to me, will that devil say, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, and Shad, I know, or I don't know you. Come on, see, see, it depends if we, we, got, we, we get a hold of that authority to be when we start praying, Lord, pray, or we don't even really believe that, we're gonna, that they're going to heal them. Do you have authority? Do you have authority? Demonstrated the power. Come on. Do you have power and authority over what you're going through? Oh, well, let me just, are you using the power and authority? You have it. It's been given. We just read that. We're in the kingdom. Hallelujah. But the problem is sometimes we, we, we're getting attacked by the enemy. And how many knows it shakes you up? How many has been in a car wreck? When you get in that wreck and you didn't see it coming, it shakes you up. Come on, it shakes you up. <clears throat> Somebody sent me the other day uh, this, this, and, and, and I, when, I, when I read it, I'm like, hey, there's a sermon in here. And it was a book entitled Reflection of Pearl Harbor by one of the admirals. And in the book it said, on Sunday morning, December 7th, 1941, Admiral Chester Nimitz was attending a concert in Washington, D.C. He was paged and told there was a phone call for him when he answered. It was President Franklin Roosevelt on the phone. He told Nimitz that, that he, Nimitz, would have been a commander of the Pacific Fleet. Nimitz flew to Hawaii and assumed the command of the Pacific Fleet. And he landed at Pearl Harbor on Christmas Eve, 1941. There was such a spirit of despair and dejection and defeat you would have thought that the Japanese had already won the war. But on Christmas Day, 1941, Admiral Nimitz was given a boat tour of the destruction wrought on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese. Uh, big sunken battleships and Navy vessels were cluttered, cluttered the water everywhere you looked. And as the boat, do uh, the boat tour returned to the dock, the young helmsman of the boat asked, Well, Admiral, what do you think after seeing all this destruction? But what Admiral Nimitz replied and shocked everyone. It shocked everyone. He said the Japanese made three of the biggest mistakes an attack force could ever make. Or he said, or was it God taking care of America? Which one do you think it was? Nimitz explained, he says, the Japanese attacked on Sunday morning. Nine out of every ten crewmen of those ships were ashore and leave. But if those same ships would have been lured out and sunk at sea, we'd have lost 38,000 men instead of 3,800. Mistake number two, when the Japanese saw all those battleships lined up in a row, they got so carried away to sink the battleships, they never once thought to bomb our dry docks opposite of those ships. If they had destroyed our dry docks, we would have had to tow every single one of those ships to America to be repaired. And as it is now, the ships are in shallow water. They can be raised. One tug can pull them to the dry dock. And we'll have them repaired and at sea by the time it would have taken to be towed to America. And I already have the crew ashore anxious to man those ships. Mistake number three. Every single drop of fuel that the Pacific, in the Pacific theater of war was on top of the ground in those storage tanks. Five miles over that hill, one plane could have destroyed all of our fuel supply. Three of the biggest mistakes. If they'd have did three things different. Hallelujah. Put up my power slide, please. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but see, the enemy has attacked us. But he has forgot 
the things we've learned, the things we've received, the things we heard, and the things we saw. And that is kingdom power. See, I want to tell you this morning as I get ready to close, Satan's made three of the biggest mistakes that he can ever do. See, because when he attacks you, he, he's, he's actively at, at the people in the church, and he's actively trying to steal our children and our friends. But guess what? He might get one or two. But guess what? There's a whole church full of power that's fixing to get on their knees. Amen. Guess what? Satan, you've made a big mistake. Because when you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. When you mess with one a child of God, you're messing with the kingdom, and our kingdom has power. Oh, just like they could have destroyed the dry dock. You might pull one church down. You might make one preacher slip in sin. But let me tell you, there's still another corner with another play hospital that they can come in and you might be hurt. You might have been broken. You might have been lied to. But let me tell you something. There's still a place on each corner all over through this city that you can come and get healed. Why? Because there's men and women of God that have learned, received, heard, and seen the power of God. And he's, the devil's dumb. Oh, he, 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 puts, he puts all kind of distractions in our hand. He puts phones, TVs, iPads, social media, news sites. Some of us need to be delivered from the news. All kind of distracted. They need to be delivered from whatever whatever's taken. But he's dumb because he can kind of distract me. But guess what? Just like the Japanese didn't do the fuel, he can't take the word. Oh, he can't take the word. He can try to destroy everything else, but I can still go in my room to my desk and open up the word, and that fuel is still there. And guess what? You can try to take that too, but it's down. It's written in our heart. Come on, kingdom. It's time to get up. I ain't worried about what the devil's doing. I'm worried about what God's doing. So I'm going to ask you in closing, do you have power? Do you have kingdom power? Do you got the power of the words? Apply it to your life. Begin to speak it. Guess what? Our words have power. Guess what? If, you, if, if, if we speak negative words, it's going to be negative your whole life. But if you speak words of power, I don't tell you, y'all hear me say it all the time, I don't like negative people. I'm not going to listen to you. If you're negative, I'm probably going to stay away from you because I want somebody that says, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. I don't like to look at things negative. You know, sometimes the church has bills, and I don't look at them negative either. My dad was like, you know how much the, the little light bill was? I was like, no. When he told me, I know he was wanting to say it. Was, I'm like, that's it? I said, when we get to the new building, it's probably going to be $1,000 a month. So we just get used to paying this couple hundred. I'm telling you, there's power. There's power in the kingdom. I'm telling you, there's people here because of the, the, I have daughters. I prayed them back home. Guess what? We have people that we are loved ones, husband and wives. We prayed. Guess what? We have jobs because we prayed. There is power. Man, quit running around like, like some scaredy cats, amen, and start standing up and, and saying, I take authority over that because the power in me, the power. So I hope in these last few weeks you've learned about kingdom authority and you learned about kingdom power. Let me tell you, there's power in the kingdom over sin. When we get the Holy Ghost, the Bible says that's the power of God unto salvation. That's why it's so important. That's why you hear me talk a lot about the Holy Ghost. If you don't have it, pray, seek for it, maybe even field. Jesus told them, and I'll end with this, to go and tarry till Jerusalem. He says, I'm leaving but I ain't taking the power with me. Oh, you, you, oh yes, you're going to catch that in a second. Yes, Lord. He, said, he, says, he says, guess what? I'm leaving. He, is, well, he did it all. 
He had taught them. They, they had learned it. They re received it. They did a little bit of dab dibble dabble. They heard it and they seen it. They've learned it. But he says, now I'm leaving. You just got here. You just got back. Oh, he says, but go into Jerusalem and tarry until you are endued with. Somebody, somebody. He says, until you are, guess what? He says, go wait. Oh, well, that, that part I don't like. See, me and Chad and waiting, no, I, I'm impatient. And, and, and don't you pray for me patience because I'll kick you. I don't want to no, I ain't doing no tribulations. I'll throat punch you. I, I'll be upset. So don't pray for me patience. I'm going to learn it on my own. So just please leave me alone. But I'm not very patient. But he said, go and wait. And so guess what? They waited and they waited. But she 500 saw him go. So 500 could have started out in that little bitty room. But because they waited 10 days, there was only 120. Oh, and they were praying and singing songs. Hey, that sounds familiar. Somebody just said something about singing songs. They were praying and singing songs unto God. And then all of a sudden, guess what? The Bible says it just like this. That all of a sudden they heard the sound. Because before they saw, see, before the tongues, before it came, there was a sound. And there was a moving in the spirit like a mighty rushing wind. What's, what's that noise? I don't know. Somebody turned the air conditioner on. The light bill's getting high. Uh, no, so he said, what is that noise? Because sometimes you hear things in the spirit and things, because what it, when you hear a noise, what it means? Something's coming. I don't know what's coming. So they just kept on singing. And then the Bible says that the Holy Ghost came in that room. And guess what? He filled every one of them. They begin to talk in tongues and cloven tongues of fire, split tongues of fire. And you're saying, whoa, I hear it. I saw it. Until you were endued, filled with power. Well, church, I want to end just like this. We're still that same church. That power has been poured out. Oh, God's not leaving a church full of girly men and women. We have power. I challenge you to begin to speak to those things in your life. Resist the devil. Submit yourself unto God. Turn from evil. Resist the devil. And he's going to flee. Remember, there's moving parts to that. So if you still, if, 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 you, if you don't turn from your wicked ways and you don't submit, don't resist because it ain't going to happen. But there's that power. Come on. How many has power? If you don't say it, I, I claim that I have power. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. How many receive it?